Father, do you want to talk about being arrested or do you want to talk about street evangelism? How do you want to go after this? Uh, you know, I'm pretty prepared for both. So you pick, Dr. Marshall. Let's talk about being arrested. You've been arrested twice in pro-life. Uh, explain how that goes down. And then maybe, I know in one of those contexts, you were able to share the gospel with one of the police officers, the guard. Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, I'm with a group called Red Rose Rescue. And it, at first I thought the arrest thing was kind of a, a publicity stunt and I was up for it, uh, maybe out of pride. But the more I looked at it and the more I talked to the people in Red Rose Rescue, the more I realized we really are entering in to do peaceful sidewalk counseling into an abortion center to hand out roses and talk to couples who are about to kill their preborn children to convince them and them alone at that moment not to hurt their children. It's not a publicity stunt now. Granted, we realize we might be arrested as the clinic workers ask us to leave there. And we gently say we cannot leave until every woman and every child is safe. And in doing this, we hand out roses and then they usually call the police. And even though our goal is to peacefully empty the place through our prayers and our admonitions, that usually doesn't happen. And then we get arrested and then that makes the news. But essentially, even the arrest is seen as a mystical offering of suffering where, you know, there's going to be steel on these babies' bodies as literally their limbs are ripped up by steel. And it's a tiny offering. But, you know, when the handcuffs broke my skin and was bleeding, it's a very, very small offering compared to that, but it is metal on my hands to, to offer up in union with Christ for these babies who will f face a much worse fate that day. And so the cops usually show up, uh, full code three, lights, sirens. Um, the last one I was arrested, I think they must have reported us as terrorists because they had, we looked at the video later, they had 10, 15, and they must have had, I can't remember, many, many SUVs come racing in and they uh, body slam my, my friend of Franciscan to the ground. And uh, a big Egyptian Muslim guy stared in my face and he's, he goes, will you comply? Will you comply? And I was pretty nervous, but I stayed calm. I said, uh, I will not resist, but I cannot leave until the babies are safe. And so he threw me on the ground and, and handcuffed me. And, you know, these guys were high energy because, again, I think they were I think it had been reported we were terrorists. Well, he booked me there in New Jersey a little well, real bit. Real quick, I mean, they came up and you guys are wearing like habits and cassocks, right? Yeah, well, Father Fidelis was kind of incognito. It's harder okay. for him to to unzip, to have the habit showing that I kind of have now. But back then, as a diocesan priest, it was easy for me to pop the Roman collar in at the last minute after doing that. But we have to go incognito. Got it. Because if we go in in the clerics, people will know we don't belong in there, so to speak, belong in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when, you know, when they booked us in the uh, Jersey jail there, um, it was actually the big Muslim guy who uh, had to do all my paperwork. And I think they were surprised we called them officer. We were very respectful to them. And there must have just been a lot of grace flowing in that whole police station because uh, one Italian man started telling me about one of the Italian uh, officers started telling me about his history of Catholicism. And I was able to encourage him which sacraments to return to. The Muslim was really amazing because. Um, he said, look, I don't disagree with what you did. I'm not against what you do, but I also have to support what Planned Parenthood did as far as the law. I said, no, you don't. They're killing children and we're trying to stop it. And yep. he just hung his head in shame when I said that. Wow. Yeah. And then and then he realized I was respectful, but I had boundaries that he wasn't going to really penetrate. And then he started opening up to me about his own life. Uh, he was dating a Spanish girl who was waiting for an annulment. And, uh, you know, so he said... Um, he was talking about that and I thought, well, this would be a good chance to see if he has any good sense of humor about this. Cause we've been talking about an hour and, and I go, how do you think she's going to feel when you, when you tell her that you arrested two priests a day and he hung his head again and goes, not very good. And we both had a good laugh. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, so then one. we were able, yeah. And he ran a call actually, um, on an unborn baby, his first week as a cop in, in Newark. Now this, our arrest wasn't in Newark. But he ran a really horrible call that I won't say on this because your all your listeners would just turn your show off. It was unbelievable. But he ran a call on an unborn baby in Newark, um, and it haunted him to that day. And so he opened up to me about what he had seen and why he understands what we were doing. Well, that led into an opportunity for me to talk about Mary in the Quran, how she's ever ever sinless, and then talk about Jesus as the Savior of the world. And he was really open to everything uh, that we were saying. Um, as I said, the other cops, some of these ex-Catholics or current Catholics were really interested then in the Catholic faith because of this. 
And by the time we left, they were all smiling and shaking our hands. And uh, we must have been their favorite criminals they've ever arrested. Uh, <laughs> but it was because we were respectful, quiet, and and really respected who cops are, what they stand for. Uh, we were able to share the gospel of life, why abortion is wrong, and also um, why Jesus is the only savior of the world.